I asked myself, what does done look like? And what are the, what is the success criteria for each of those tasks in the bigger project? Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Unstoppable Woman podcast. I'm Amira Alvarez, and I'm super excited that you're here and listening. Thank you for being a loyal listener, and let's jump right in. So today, I thought I would share with you how I approach planning. So I started to plan my 2022, what we're doing with the company, what our growth plans are, what our vision is, and I've actually been doing this for the last few weeks really since mid-November, um, I get an early start on this. I used to do it between that, uh, that, that qu- during that quiet week between Christmas and New Year's, and I will still continue to do that, though I'm going on a beautiful vacation as well. Uh, but that's what, that's what I love to do um, in that quiet time, and I will have some additional time to, to map the, that out. But as my business gets bigger and bigger and I have more spaciousness, though it's still full and still growing, and I love it that way, um, I start earlier in the planning cycle for the next year. And of course, you know, end of 2021, beginning of 2022, that's an arbitrary um, time to, to plan, but it is something psychologically clear for us that this is a new year and let's, what are we doing for the new year? And so I thought I would share with you how I approach planning and how I approach uh, the planning specifically for my, for my business and what I look at and, and how I see it. The first thing that I want you to know about planning is that it's an iterative experience, meaning you're going to want to circle back to it several times again and again, like that, that this idea that you sit down and you do your plan and it's going to be done and complete the first time you think about it, the first time you, you sit down pen to paper or with your team or however you do your planning. I do my planning by myself and then with my team, which I will share with you exactly how I do that shortly. But the big mistake that I think people make is that you should be able to get this done in an instant, right? In the first sitting, the first time through. And that's just not how it works. So even though I know that I will have a leadership team meeting in January of this year, I am or I'm not counting on that to as the time where I'm going to get the big thoughts, the vision mapped out. I need my alone time for that. And I am going to do several iterations of it and get clearer and clearer um, before I bring it to a leadership team meeting. And I I will bring it to my team. and I've already brought it to my team earlier than that. And I, again, will share with you how I do that in a moment. But first, first concept here is that it's an iterative approach. So give yourself the time that it takes to circle back to the You'll, you'll have an idea, you'll have a vision, you'll have something that you know that you want to create and you need the time to map that out. So it's an iterative approach and you're going to want to give yourself that thoughtful time to do it. And that's actually probably it's going to take you more time than you think. So give yourself some good chunks of thoughtful time to work this out. I do my best work early in the mornings before the rest of the world is awake and on the weekends. And that for me is, is quiet time where there's no, no clients, no, no team, no scheduled meetings where I can spend a few hours in the morning again, quiet time by myself to really dive into this. Now you're, you, you might want to do this differently. You might want to carve out, um, an entire work day. Um, and, and block it out for this, or a couple work days and block it out for this. You might want to take yourself on a, a personal business retreat where you give yourself time to do this kind of deep visioning. I do that 
uh, regularly throughout the year. I, I, I take myself on retreat uh, so that I can really clear my mind and dive in and engage with all the stuff that I've been learning and up-leveling with, right? Like I, I am constantly up-leveling and then you need thoughtful time and execution time. So you're going to really want to give yourself that deep, thoughtful time, understand that it's an iterative approach, and also give yourself multiple times to come back, which is the idea of iterative approach. But but you need to allow yourself that time to percolate on the ideas and then come back to it. So percolate, feel into what you're wanting to create, feel into the frustrations that you're having in your business. I, I don't recommend staying there, but the antidote to the frustration is to create a great plan. Right? The antidote is to understand and get clarity on what those real frustrations are so that you can develop a plan that solves for that, not solving for some, some issue that is uh, hypothetical and not real for you and your business. So giving yourself that time to percolate, feel into the pain and frustration, come back to it, feel into it, come back to it and get real clarity on what you're solving for is super, super huge. So in that whole process of thinking, feeling, I, you know, iterating all of that, I am writing out all my thoughts. Okay. You do this the way it works for you. It can be an Evernote document. It could be a Google's doc document. It could be pen to paper. You could do it on a whiteboard. You could put it in your journal. Um, there's so many different ways that you can capture these ideas, but you're going to want to, to, to map out all those thoughts. Um, for me, what I do is initially it's pen to pad. I have, um, so many of these giant yellow legal pads. Um, and I just take pen to paper and I write it all out and I don't worry about the order, I, it's like page after page of thoughts and ideas and we could do this and what about this and I'm frustrated here, how would you solve for that? Like I'm having a whole conversation with myself. It's like a, a personal VIP day with myself. And I, I start with the, the pen to paper on the pad and then it gets a little bit um, frustrating, right? You've got all these different ideas and you need to order them. Now, if you're doing this on a Google Doc or some sort of online document, you can cut and paste and you can move things around. And that that's all fine and good. Um, but I'm a pen to paper gal. So the next thing that I do is I get one of those giant uh, post-it notepads, the really extra large ones that are probably like two feet wide by three feet tall. And I get big colored markers and I start mapping out all my different ideas and, and taking them and putting them in order from the, the, the first download, uh, from my brain, the first brain dump that has, again, I know I'm, I'm saying this over and over again, that I've like been capturing over a few mornings and days and, you know, it's building. Uh, I will, I will get to a place where I'm like, okay, I'm ready to map it all out. And I put it, um, on these big, uh, white pad notes and the different aspects of them go on different pads. And the, the last time I did this, I think I had something like five big post-it note pads. And yes, me, I do this first thing in the morning when no one's awake, my dog's still asleep and I'm in my bathrobe with my big white pad and I'm in my happy place. Okay. If anyone tells you, you shouldn't do your work at this time versus this time. And you need to do it like this or like this, tell them to go, you know, find someone else to talk to or jump off a bridge or whatever, you know, like leave you alone because you went into business for yourself so that you could do business the way you want to do business. Now that does not mean that I am doing business at three in the morning. If I don't want to be doing business at three in the morning, I generally am asleep at three in the morning. Or what's another way of saying this? Like you don't have to work all the time. But you do need to understand your work rhythms and uh, dial that in. So a little tangent there, but really you want to, like for me, that's my happy place. I am so content and I love that. And yet the, the world says it's supposed to be nine to five. The world says like you shouldn't work um, like that. And I say, 
I'm really successful working like this and I love it. So don't tell me what to do. Tell yourself what to do and go be successful being you. I'll be successful being me. Okay. So if you have that as a, as a thing, which I used to, which is why I'm articulating this. I used to fight my desire to work at particular times because that wasn't what you should do. You should take that time off. You shouldn't be driven like that. That's being a workaholic. Well, what if I, I have my best energy in the morning, my most creative energy in the morning, and I'm bushed by the time two or three comes along, why wouldn't I take advantage of when I am super energized, right? So there you go. I had to work through that. And I hope that helps you if that is an issue uh, that you're, you're working with. So anyways, I put these, my ideas on, on these big white pads. Now, of course, that's not really that useful for sharing, though I do take photos of them and share them. What my next uh, step in this was I took photos of them and I shared them along with uh, a loom to my, to my leadership team. Okay. So that was quite an extensive loom. Tried to talk quickly. Now loom, if you don't know what it is, is a great tool. Go check it out. Loom.com. It allows you to do a screen share and record what's on your screen, um, with audio as well and, and video if you want. So anyways, I took those, those snapshots of, of my plan and shared it with my team because I wanted to get their feedback. Now here's the theme of this episode, right? This is iteration. So that was like, first it was iteration by myself in my head, but then I took that and I shared it with my team to iterate on it. And even in the process of uh, sharing the plan with them, I had new ideas and I saw little tweaks that I wanted to make and I wanted to get their input. And I very much said, please like throw, uh, throw darts in this, ask me the questions that you need to ask in order for us to move forward on that. And then we had a meeting to discuss it. And, um, this is what I, this is like road testing it. Like it's a little, like you're putting up the concept to see if it's, it, if it's going to work. Now, this requires that you have a leadership team in your business. Some of you do, some of you don't. If you have a leadership team, definitely, um, lean on them here. You're also going to want to lean on your coach. You're going to want to lean on your, your mentors. You're going to want to lean on your, uh, community, your, your mastermind community, the women who, um, are in your space and going for more, you want to get their feedback as well. If they are appropriate people to get feedback from. Um, so I lean on my, my coaches and I lean on my team and, uh, and I lean on my mastermind group. Those are the, the, the places where I, I look for insights and feedback and I'm asking them different questions. Okay. And I'm providing them different levels of information to get feedback. So those would be like the, that's the next round of iteration. Hey, Amira here with a quick announcement for you. We are super excited to be offering our community a new training. It's a 60 minute deep dive into the five critical components required to make a quantum leap in master money and master scale. So in this training, we are going to be covering how to raise your internal set point for success and for income generation, both for yourself and your business and how to increase your focus and accountability on a daily basis so you keep your word and you don't end up disappointing yourself not doing what you said you were going to do. This is one of the key components to moving the needle in your business and creating more income and revenue. Okay. And then we're going to be talking about how to fast track your innate ability to think like a successful entrepreneur. So that plus several other things we are going to be deep diving for 60 minutes and I cannot wait for you to join me. So please register for this special training at theunstoppablewoman.com slash money. And I'll see you there. Then from there, you're going to want to create projects. You're going to want to take this master plan. That's going to be overwhelming at that point and break it down into these are the key components. These are the key projects that we need to complete. I will raise my hand here 
and I can do this beautifully for other people. But when I'm looking at my own stuff, I often have the, I want everything done now this week, right? Today, let's get it all done now. And, and that's just not viable and feasible. So you really need to step back and order your projects. And this is something that I do in consultation with my team, because when it's your own stuff, you get into the weeds a little bit about with it. And this is why people come to me for VIP days, or we do, um, you know, case studies in our mastermind and, and really map out how to look at planning your vision, your process, your, your um, next steps. So you're going to want to take your project and or, or your vision and break it down to smaller projects. Now, what is a project that, that is, um, it, there's not a one size fits all answer to that. You're going to want to think about a project as like, there's, there's some delineation here. Okay. Like this could be done. This could be phase one. This is a, a concrete amount of work. And it's not really the amount, it's the type of work that the tasks that all go together. Okay. Now there's going to be crossover. Like when I look at the projects that need to happen for my vision to be executed on, there's a lot of crossover. Like in order to get this done, I need this done. And in order to get this done, I need this done. And there's a lot of that. So you're going to want to map that out. And it's not going to be in perfect individualized segments. There's going to be crossover, but you're going to want to, to, to map it out and order it. The universe loves order. Order is heaven's first law. If you are out of order, if you're trying to do things that need to be done fourth, fifth, sixth, first, you're going to cause chaos. So you're going to want to really see what are the first things that you need to do and put those um, projects in order. So create the projects and then, uh, put them in order and then look at what are all the key components in those projects. Cause it's not, it's not enough just to look at the projects. Now it depends on who you have on your team. Now, if you already have an ops manager or a project manager or someone who can take these projects and break them down into smaller components, uh, this is the, the, task one in this project. This is task two, task three, task four, and like plan it out and delegate it to people. Then you're going to, you can hand it off to that person. They can make it real for you. However, if you're not there yet, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to go, okay, in this project, project one, we have to do these five things. And those five things are going to require these, these resources. And the resources are people resources, time resources and money resources. Okay. And you're going to want to see who needs to be involved, who needs to understand what the plan is. Do you need to hire people? Do you need to hire full-time people? Do you need to hire part-time people, contractors, in-house people? What, what's involved to get this done? Do you need better systems? That's another resource. Okay. Do you need better systems? That's, that requires money. What kind of money do you need for that team and those resources? So you want to look at all of that when you're looking at your projects and the, the tasks that build into those projects. When you're looking at the tasks that build into those projects, I always ask myself, what does done look like? This is so important because it's going to show you all the gaps in your thinking right? It's going to show you what you are not yet clear about. And you cannot abdicate that level of clarity. You have to build, you have to think this through enough so that you can hand it off to someone on your team to execute on, on it. Now, the level of detail that you need to go into there depends on the kind of team that you have. If you're a solo entrepreneur and you're hiring contractors, it's going to be a lot of a lot of detail. If you are much further along and you have a lot of people who are well-trained and have good judgment, you're just going to have to say, this is what done looks like. This is, this is the high level of that, but not go into the nitty gritty. They're able to, to figure that out. Okay. And they can come back to you with, with questions. So I asked myself, what does done look like? And what are the, what is the success criteria for each of those tasks in the bigger project. Okay. What, what do I need? Like I need to be clear with my team. This is what done looks like this. These are the criteria for success. Okay. Th those are two ways of saying the same thing. 
Okay. And then you also need to ask yourself who actually needs to know about this. I like to do team wide, community wide shares on the big vision. Once I get it to a place where I can communicate it clearly to the team. And so that's actually the next step that is on my plate is I've had the conversations with my leadership team, but now I want to communicate it to the larger team because it's very exciting. And I want them all to understand what we're doing, be able to ask questions and be able to go execute and, and bring their expertise to the vision because I, I can't do all the things in the business and neither can you. Okay. And then from there, you're handing off these projects, these these smaller components of the projects to the people who need to own them. And you're asking for input and insight and ask them to confirm understanding that they can run with this. And then you have a plan. Okay. Oh, one more thing. When you're ordering things, you need to look at how much time stuff is going to take so that you can set that expectation for yourself and for your team for the timeline for the execution of the vision. One thing that I know is that I generally have big visions and the timeline in my heart and in my head tends to be short. I want, like I said earlier, everything done this week. Well, that's insanity, okay? If it's a big vision, it's gonna take some time to execute. But what is that amount of time? Can you map it out? And usually if you're, if you are being efficient and effective, you don't want that big plan to take more than three to six months. I actually do this kind of visioning, um, multiple times a year and the big stuff I I'm doing now is to, to achieve my 2022 goals. Okay. But it's also setting the foundation for for years beyond that. And I know that partway through 2022, we are going to be doing what? Iterating on this. We're going to have like put it to the test, gotten feedback, tested and tweaked, seen that we need to do other things. So it's important to recognize when you're doing the timeline that it's probably not a year long project that you have in front of you, but this is just the next phase. This is the big thing that's going to get you to your 2022 goal. And then there's probably some other things that are going to come up and that's the fun of business. Okay. So that is how I approach planning for 2022. That's how I approach planning for the upcoming year. And if you would like to download a checklist of all the things that I mentioned so that you can go, oh yeah, I've done that. Oh yeah, I've done that. Oh yeah, I need to think about that. Um, please go to theunstoppablewoman.com slash E261. So that's theunstoppablewoman.com slash E261. E stands for episode, and this is episode 261. So I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. Please share it with your friends, subscribe to the podcast, give us a review. We love reviews and welcome them. So please give us a review. And I can't wait to see you in the next episode where we are going to be doing more on how to set yourself up for success in 2022. Okay, rock it out, be unstoppable. Catch you in the next episode. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for joining us and being part of the Unstoppable Woman movement. We have got a ton of free resources for scaling your business at theunstoppablewoman.com slash free stuff. And you can find that link in the description below. So go ahead and check those out. And we'd also love your help in getting our message out to more and more women. If you'd be willing to share this video with all the unstoppable women in your life, that would be fantastic. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Reviews, likes, and comments are greatly appreciated. We go in and read them all. So thank you for those. And thanks for listening and be unstoppable. Unstoppable.